Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on chess.com right now, and we're going to have a look at a game from someone that's on my friends list here. Uh, they recently played a 10-0 time control game. Mopez here played a game against Chess3301. Uh, the ratings were about 1500 for white and 1525 for black. Uh, we see a Sicilian in this game. The game runs about 35 moves. If you're here for the long haul, if you see the, if you're here for the whole game, you'll see that the f last five moves, uh, there's quite the roller coaster going on. The evaluation it really goes bonkers. A lot of ups and downs. Uh, but it's really the first 10 moves of this game that I found most instructive. So let's see how it plays out. We see knight f3 and now queen a5. Um, quite an unusual move, a typical move for sure. I've seen it before. I've had this played against me before. Uh, I didn't know what the name of it was. It does have a name. It's known as the stiletto variation or alt house variation. Okay, I had to look it up. Um, the name is not important. What it is doing is, or what is it attempting to do at least. I imagine the idea is to interfere with what it is white wants to do. Can't play d4 as easily. Um, I do like the approach that white takes in response to queen to a5. And uh, I don't know, again, if this is something that I could uh, recommend to bring the queen out this early. But there's not going to be some direct way to uh, really punish such a move. So let's see what white does. He's playing first c3. Okay. Knight c6. Knight a3. All right. So playing d4 right away. White wants to be in a position to recapture like this, but that pawn is pinned. So first it's knight a3. The knight plays to c4, kicking the queen off the diagonal, and then is consistent with building in the center. Uh, this is not the best move to run home. Better is to go here, where at least she remains uh, developed. But okay, she goes home d4 and now b5. The computer does not like this move. Mm. I could see playing on the black side. I could see a player on the black side wanting to do something like this. A player on the black side uh, uh, is the player on the black side is likely recognizing that this knight is eyeing a sensitive point in the black position and it should have your concern with without question doing something about this knight's post uh, should have your attention on the black side. If not, if you're not doing something quickly, you could be, there could be some capture and then the queen and knight are converging on the weakest square in your position. So something needs to be done with this knight. But how exactly to chase him off of this square is the big question. In the game it was b5, but this is not best. A better move is d5. We're gonna, we're gonna have a look at the reasons why that is the case. What makes b5 not as good? Well, for one, this is an aggressive move, but also it's a move that is leaving black vulnerable in some way. Um, this pawn is now on an unprotected square. So wherever the knight goes in the game, he went to d2. There's an immediate counterattack against b5, and black is having to react. Uh, with d5, you don't have that issue. The knight moves, and there's no counterattack. There's no piece to be biting at, piece or pawn to be biting at. So for that reason, d5 is better, but it doesn't end there. It's better because it's not just hitting the knight, but this pawn. It's interfering with white's ideal pawn center. It's being disruptive to white's pawn duo. And also, it's uh, potentially opening up this diagonal for the bishop. In fact, the computer likes this is the best variation to take, and after the recapture to play here, well... This is much better for the bishop, and we can start to play some uh, normal developing moves here, getting the minor pieces out, and hopefully castling very quick since we have a completely opened e-file. Uh, the main point here is that d5 is far better than this vulnerable. Uh, both, both moves are aggressive, but b5 uh, doesn't accomplish as much and leaves black vulnerable. Knight d2 is the follow-up or the reply here, and mm, it's not the best square. If you're going to retreat, try not to retreat so far back. Uh, this is a more central post for the knight. 
Mm, however you slice it, whether he's on d2 or e3, he's he's going to be in the way of the bishop. That much is for sure. Um, but if you're playing to d2, you're also interfering with the queen. And he's less, he's not as central. Better move is knight here, influencing some center squares, uh, so a deeper center square, we could say, this uh, a square that's in black's position. Uh, and uh, maybe there's uh, this d5 push. Uh, it's, it's a good spot here for the knight being on e3. But okay. He goes to d2, and how does black respond playing c4? This move is really, really common, or not not this move, but just this idea of releasing tension in the position, right? You have the option to capture, you have the option to push, you have the option of simply sitting, not doing anything. And so often it is the case that a player will just push the pawn and release the tension. Uh, a better move, a best move here, is in fact to capture. And then after the recapture, to deal with this threat in a way that's, uh, well, we could identify as a counter-attacking move. The queen, I realize she is getting a workout here, moving now a third time. Uh, this would be uh, quite a fine move. There to defend and at least start to give some direction uh, to the white side, to throw a punch back at the white side here. Uh, defensive b5, punch at d4, and if this, well, maybe white has to be a bit careful. Okay. Uh, so this would have been better to capture and then follow up with queen to b6, mixing uh, defense with uh, some aggression here on d4. But it was this uh, releasing of the tension and pushing forward, creating no threat at all, giving uh, zero direction at all to white here and allowing this uh, ideal center to remain on board unchallenged. Now, how white follows up is with b3. And I believe white has the right idea by doing this. Um, or is, is in the ballpark, I guess we could say. Or to, to try and chip away, to try and undermine white's, or uh, black's structure here, their advanced pawns, the one that's deep in white's position, I imagine. This guy here, I know it would have my attention on the white side. I'd really like to make a move like this, but can't do that. So this seems quite uh, normal to be attacking uh, this pawn that's in your position. Uh, however, it's not best when uh, you're looking to undermine a structure or a pawn chain, uh, your opponent's uh, pawn structure or pawn chain, uh, probably be a good idea to look first into striking at the base of the pawn structure before the head of the pawn structure. Uh, look look, look at the tail of the pawn structure. Look to strike at the tail of the pawn structure before the head of the pawn structure. If you're trying to strike at the head of the pawn structure, you might be leaving yourself a little bit vulnerable. Um, this is the case uh, quite often when it comes time to strike at pawn chains or pawn structures. If you're striking at the head of the pawn structure, you leave yourself a little bit vulnerable. How so in this position? Well, c3. This is a little bit uh, vulnerable now. It's unprotected on c3. We don't have that issue if white is to approach this structure here by striking at the tail, this base point b5. And this here would be the best move. Um, this is by far the best move, a4. The computer is about a pawn and a half advantage already. A4 is that good. B5 cannot be maintained. A6 is not working because at the end the rook is unprotected. Uh, A4 is the best move, and what is black to do? If this pawn cannot be maintained, C4 will fall very, very soon. Uh, if black is taking, we're recapturing with the queen. C4 is hit a million times. Can't be defended. D5, the knight is hanging. He's going to fall. The end result of a variation like this is that white has everything. Has an extra pawn. Has a better structure. This pawn is un, uh, is isolated. White has an ideal pawn center. Uh, white has a lead in development. There's just 
so many good reasons that this position would be good. The main point here is that I could see why you would want to strike at this point here, but think first into striking at the tail of the pawn structure before the head of the pawn structure. I'm drawing reference to this because this C3 point after this move here, um, this C3 square, or the, the pawn here, ends up, uh, black ends up putting pressure on it and white is having to babysit this pawn for a little bit during the game and that's and that makes life a little bit difficult for the white side these these first the 10 moves of the game are really critical points this is going to lead to a very very good game for white but by playing b3 black is now in a position to support that point with d5 and now we have e5 so uh, this is another point. White is doing something similar, uh, releasing the tension in the center. However slight it is, uh, in this position, I would identify white as being the side who is slightly ahead in development. If that is the case, you should be more welcome to exchanges. You should be more welcome to having the position open up than to have it close. And again, however slight it is, I realize that white just has one more piece than black developed at this point. But still, um, either keep the tension, let this pawn sit, or capture. Those will be two better options than to push forward at this point right here with e5. Um, another move to look into is still this a4 move. However, at this stage, it's not as effective as it would have been. Uh, one move earlier uh, because black has this move here b4 and that's a bit annoying gets uh, really complicated here with if black takes like or excuse me if white takes like this black takes like that you have to contend with a black pawn on c3 or similarly if you're taking like this yet again the pawn pushes you have to deal with this guy so it's not going to be as effective in, in this position here playing a4 but it's still uh, a quite a good option, something like a4, b4, and then bishop to b2. Again, keeping the tension in the position, leaving these options open where you can open the position to the benefit of your better developed pieces. Okay, got a little out of breath there. <laughs> got a little carried away. Um, okay, let's see how it follows up. We have the center closing up, and I said the first 10 moves uh, is what I found to be most instructive and I was not joking. <laughs> uh, this is one final uh, chance to really get in A4 to do something about uh, the structure. Uh, but we have the tension in this case being resolved with B takes C, B takes C. And with this uh, final exchange, really the the stage is set for the rest of the game. The stage has been set. The structure has been set. Uh, the The sketch of the painting has been set uh, for the rest of the game here. Um, the pieces, it's going to be up to the pieces now to find good squares. Who, Which side will function better uh, within this structure? Uh, black is already the preferred side uh, with this last exchange. And uh, l let's, see, let's see how it plays out a little bit here. We get some developing moves in. Bishop e2, that knight had to move again in order to get this guy out and get castled. White castles, bishop to e7, a4. What's the idea behind a4? This is interesting moment. This is, uh, white is aware, I imagine, of the good and the bad bishops in this position, the bad bishop being this dark square bishop. Uh, this is white's good bishop. Uh, white is seeking to exchange his bad bishop for uh, black's good bishop here. So it seems sensible, um, and well, yeah, I could see it for many reasons why you'd want to make such a move. Not just for good bad bishop reasons, but also because mm, it's a bit cramping maybe over here dealing with this c pawn. And both sides have a little bit of a space issue, but I think it's white that's going to be struggling a bit more. This also will be costing a bit of time. So while this exchange uh, does does occur. The, the bad bishop for good bishop exchange. This rook will now be inconvenienced, right? He's not going to be able to just come over here. He has to drop back and come over. So some time is uh, going to have to be invested here on 
uh, the white side to get this rook back to working. And again, notice that this pawn is going to easily be struck out. In fact, right away on this next move, queen a5, queen c2 to defend. It's uh, This is also a weak square. That's one of the other drawbacks with doing a4 to try and get in that uh, bishop exchange. It does weaken b3. Uh, following up, we have rook b8. Uh, let me let me also point out here that this is uh, I'm, I'm not trying to say at this point that oh black has the better structure and you know this is losing for white or anything like that I'm just saying that it's a, a much more difficult road ahead there were other options earlier on to be undermining the black structure okay that didn't happen what what could still be a good uh, idea what what should white be shooting for in this position uh, one, one approach to take here is to get this pawn up to the f5 square. It takes some work, but this is a direction to go in. You need to play where you have a space advantage in this particular case. Uh, white has a space advantage on the king side here, denoted by this pawn being positioned on black side of the board and on the king side of the board. So white has a king side space advantage, whereas um, this pawn here for black, the one on c4, will indicate that black has a space advantage on uh, the queen side of the board. So, that said, this pawn should really be trying to get up here to get some pawn break in to create some open or half open file for the white rooks to be uh, working. Uh, a step in this direction is to first give this knight a kick. Uh, he could go to h6. If he goes to h6, You'd have to support this pawn. You might even be able to do something like drop your knight immediately back and then try to rush right up there to get in f5. Or if knight h4 takes, takes, and then you're freeing your f-pawn to get rolling here to create some pawn break and play where you have this space advantage. So this is a direction that white should be shooting for. I know this is a super, super weakening move to launch let's say this central pawn of your kingside pawn structure, two squares, you're weakening four squares, but this is this is still called for to get this uh, f pawn rolling, to get this f5 advance in. Okay, this did not take shape. White goes in the direction of uh, achieving the bad bishop for good bishop exchange. Queen c2, some... Quite natural stuff happening here. Getting in a better position, dropping back, development here, uh, occu uh, occupying an open file. Black prepares to double, uh, putting pressure on the pawn. Rook b5, queen a6. It starts to get a little bit tactical. In fact, there's a tactical shot right now. A really good one. One that's quite interesting after bishop to d1 move here, a better move. Well, what was played in the game was knight to a5. Um, ta the tactic, you know, what I'm showing right now are tactics that are available in the position, but really the main focus was the structure. Um, yeah, there's going to be tactics that are missed in games like this, but my main focus here was really to, to get a, a, a better game out of the opening those first 10 moves to be playing within a better structure to have undermined the structure in a better way. Uh, and there's, there's many different combinations or tactics that uh, we could be seeing from here on out. This is, this is interesting. Knight takes on d4. And if knight or pawn, well, if knight takes, you just take with the knight. And then you'll, we'll see the follow up. It'll be the same. Um, but if knight takes in the immediate capture by the pawn, there would follow bishop takes rook. And after pawn takes, to not take here, taking here is still good for black, but there's this pretty neat move. Queen a1 pins the bishop and uh, hits that pawn a second time, and it really can't be defended. Uh, so that would have been an interesting combination. And if he's gone, well, two connected pass pawns, and white is nowhere close to generating any threat against the black king. Uh, black is in the driver's seat here. I think it's around plus three. Anyhow, that wasn't played. It was an interesting opportunity for black. Instead it was knight a5, rook b2, getting out of the way of that bishop there. h6, uh, you see that black is, what, what's happening here is that black is playing on the side of the board 
uh, where he has the advantage, where he has space, and White has yet to start anything uh, against the Black King. It's quite difficult. This pawn is super annoying. Uh, if this bishop was here, or, you know, behind the queen, and there was something to get into h7 real quick, there might be something, but that costs time. I don't know if uh, White has the time to be re regrouping like that. Uh, he tries it, though. He's get, getting the, the knight over here, reworking the knight over to the king side of the board. Knight b5. And now queen to b1, looking to get this knight, but this pawn is now picked right up. And now this is the next pawn break to get in. Now that there's no longer an A pawn, this will be the, the next direction to go in, breaking at this point and creating a pass C pawn. So what's tried here is knight g3. Uh, black just gets on with pushing, but there's really no reason to allow white the opportunity to damage the structure. After b5 takes, takes, you really shouldn't be allowing this. In fact, you're just picking up a pawn right here. Um, black went for b5. Um, what you should do is take, keep the structure as is. This is a perfect structure here on the black side. No weaknesses. Uh, no permanent weaknesses against the black king here. These two pawns controlling all these squares here. Um, and this is the very straightforward uh, pawn break. And then there's a pass pawn that white's having to deal with. But okay, after knight g3, black did not take the knight, instead pushed. White didn't take here and instead put pressure on this pawn. Looking to eventually get the queen. The queen eventually tries to get over here on the g file. Looking for some mate against g7. It gets a little bit scary for sure uh, against the black king. Black is anticipating these threats, withdrawing the queen, and then coming over here to defend bishop c2. The knight runs away. Queen d1, so white is quickly organizing their pieces. b4, queen g4. And this is where black... <clears throat> excuse me. This is where black, I believe, panics a little bit. And I could see many players... <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I could see many players panicking at this point here. We have two knights, okay... Knights on the rim, dim, not so much uh, the case here. They do appear to be quite menacing. Uh, queen can't go too far away. She has a job. Prevent the mate in one. Uh, there's also, with this last move, knight, F, knight to f6. Uh, exploiting this pin. Giving giving check to the king here. Um, how does black follow up here? There's, there's this bishop also raking right down here. So there's a lot of attacking pieces. Bishop, two knights, and a queen, and there's only these two defenders, but uh, black is fine here, but I th believe overreacts, playing knight to g6. And I'm pretty sure that black did see this idea of knight to f6, but it's really just a check. Uh, a better move here is to simply capture on this square. Um, and you, ha you have a passed pawn here. Um... He didn't do that, and instead played knight to g6, knight to g6 here. Um, you know, the only, here, here's one, I've said this before, the knights, when you have two knights on the same diagonal, two squares separating them, they offset one another. So if you could, as best you can, I think having these two knights here, visualizing these two knights on h4 here, and the one on e7, visualizing them as if they offset, as if they're not on the board at all. It might help you to better visualize this position, because these are the only two key squares that uh, they're fighting for. And if this knight move does take place, let's just say after this capture, if this check does come on board, after king here, what's the great follow-up? In fact, there's just this threat being thrown right back at black. Pawn takes knight. You know, it's just a check, he gets out of the way, and then the knight is hit. And don't forget about the rook. He's hit as well. So, uh, black overreacted a little bit by playing knight g6, and uh, black went from being better here, um, taking would have been better, and now it's about even, and, well, it's it's one of those dynamic positions they called about even-ish here, but it's still very, very complicated. Uh, knight g6, well, I, I believe actually white is slightly better here, but 
Knight g6 was played, and white should be taking right here. Um, bishop, bishop takes knight, or uh, knight takes knight. Knight takes knight would be good. Would be good here. With queen takes pawn, if the king goes to the corner, queen here is going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, queen f7. There are these complications with the rook being hit. This pawn here. It gets very very messy. I think one of the lines was rook f8, bishop takes pawn. Again, very, very messy stuff. Um, this knight should have been taken, but it wasn't. Again, I said in the beginning of the game that it was a lot of back and forth. Maybe, uh, again, attributed to time pressure for both sides at this stage. Um, white is once again the better side after this capture. Um, and after knight takes here, we have c3 and... White is now the winning side. There's knight takes queen here, but uh, these these things were missed. And again, I think it's attributed to uh, some time pressure here. I think what White really wanted to do, maybe White did see that he could take the queen. I'm not so sure, but uh, this is, it just gets really messy here in these final moves. The most instructive point, again, was the early stage of the game. Um, white might have had the idea, well, I don't want to just give him my rook up for any reason at all and let me take the knight first, but unfortunately, now there's no time to take the queen because of this back rank mate. Um, so, uh, the game did follow. This is what we did happen. Did have happen. Rook takes knight, rook takes rook. The knight retreated, and, well, okay, white didn't see that there was this back rank mate, mate. Back rank mate at the end. <laughs> rook to b1, and there's no defense here. You can just block. Rook takes, and that's game over. But uh, the end of the game, clearly it got really, really messy with these uh, tactics here, one side here, bla the black side. I Maybe a bit overreacting with this knight to g6 move instead of uh, chipping away at this structure, getting that pass pawn. But the main points of the game, okay, we saw something crazy with queen a5. I liked how white handled dealing with the queen, kicking the queen off of this diagonal. Building the center, b5, not as good as d5 for all of those reasons. Striking in the center, dealing, uh, doing something about the center of the board, not leaving yourself uh, vulnerable here by having a pawn unprotected on the b5 square. Knight e3 instead of knight to d2 uh, would have been better. And right here, the main point uh, of, this, uh, of this game, of this structure, when it comes to the pawn structure... Uh, look into first striking at the tail of the pawn chain before the head of the pawn chain. Oftentimes, striking at the head of the pawn chain can leave you a little bit uh, vulnerable, as was the case right here, c3. Uh, he's now unprotected. Black put some pressure on that a little bit later. And again, at this point, however slight it is, time-wise, if you have a lead in development, um, don't be so quick to close the position. Keep the tension in the position. Leave him sitting or capture, but don't close it up if you have a lead in development. That happened by white, and uh, after this capture, uh, the structure is set, and we played within it, and uh, black is the one who, who uh, was successful at the end of the day here, having this dark square bishop exchange, okay? Uh, there was just too much activity on the side of the board where black had the uh, advantage, had the space, tactical shot here but th th those these tactical points are not as uh, interesting to me it's really uh, finding a good structure to play within um, I don't know if you found this tip useful but again uh, being able to visualize certain pieces here is negating one another imagining in this position as if the knights are not on board might have been a little bit uh, uh, more clear to see this position uh, see that the tactics that white has or really doesn't have in this position if these guys are just not on the board um, and yeah got messy at the very end but uh, as usual I hope you got something out of this video feel free to share any uh, feedback in the comment section below and I will catch you in the next video take care